Hi, Rick here from Marv Models, DJI dealer from the UK and RC specialist for over 40 years. In this video, I'm going to cover getting your new DJI Spark from the box to the flying field. I'm going to cover all the calibration, setup, activation, and how to use the controller. Okay, let's take a quick overlook over the craft itself. So first thing we need to obviously look at the front, of course, is the camera. Now this is a two axis camera. In fact, if I just tilt that so it looks up. Here we go, oops. Now the camera, as you're probably noticing, will always want to stay pointing at the horizon. Now this is a what we call a 2D camera. So what will happen is it will stabilize the pitching of the craft and the rolling of the craft. Um, what it doesn't obviously stabilize is the yaw because that is in a three axis gimbal. So we have that. Then the spig sensor on the front, this is actually the obstacle avoidance sensor. This is actually electronic eye seeing out, kind of like an Xbox Kinect. Uh, kinetic um, so it will see obstacles don't place blind faith in obstacle avoidance because it can get tricked in certain instances and it also doesn't work at night moving on to the bottom of the craft you've got the electronic eyes this is for the visual positioning system on the bottom so if there's no gps like if you're flying indoors these electronic eyes looking at the ground these two will do the height and this one does the actual position so where if you don't have gps telling it where to locate and hold solid that electronic eye will. These plates at the bottom, this is for the optional charging station. So rather than taking the battery out of the craft, that simply plops into a charging station and charges the battery that way. Um, oh, moving on to the back, at the rear, we have the on off button, which you obviously know about. Under here, we've got the boot. So we've got a USB connection for either charging the battery in situ via a USB cable, and then we have the SD card slot there. Moving round the craft, we've got obviously the battery release clamps there, and of course we've got the wee rubber feet. Uh, on the bottoms of the aircraft, as you can see, we've got LED indicators. Um, these light up different colors for different states of play, etc. And of course, moving on to the top of the craft, we've got cooling fence on the side there. They mustn't be covered and also means that you can't fly, obviously, drones in the rain. And of course, we've got our props, which we've covered on an earlier video showing you how to remove them. Okay, so first things first, uh, we need to charge the battery in the Spark and the uh, Spark controller. Now, depending on the package you got, if you got the Fly More bundle, you will have a controller and you will also have the charging hub, which allows you to charge three batteries, uh, one after the other, not at the same time. Uh, if you just have the Spark on its own, then you will have the charger, you won't have the charging hub. So I will take it that you have the Fly More bundle first. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the battery out the Spark. So you will, if you lift the Spark over, you'll see these clamps, one on either side. They just push forward and then the battery just simply unclips and then we can put the Spark aside. So we need that. We've obviously got our charger, which we have plugged into the mains. Comes with a standard Android cable here and we have our charging hub here. So first thing we need to do is charge, plug the um, Spark's charger into the charging hub. Very simple, connector there. It is polarized, there's a wee notch in there as you can see and that simply goes into there. And you will see, if I just move that out of the way, you'll see we now have a green light, meaning that the bar is ready to go. And then to simply charge the battery, the battery just like kind of like a camera battery, it will go in and then it will push back, clip into place. And if you look closely, you will now have pulsing green light here and you now here you've got these scrolling batteries. As I say, if you've got the Fly More bundle, you could have more than one battery, and then we just plug the other one in, like that. And what will happen is, what happens is, is you'll probably notice it's now started charging the other battery, because what it'll do if you put three batteries on, it will take the battery with the most charge, and it will charge that one first. So this battery obviously had priority over this one, so it swapped onto this one. So what it'll do is it'll get you flying as soon as possible by charging the most full battery, then it will go on to the next one, and then the one with the lowest charge. But the idea with this is you don't have to keep swapping the batteries over. You can put all three on if you have three, and then just away you go. Now, of course, we need to now charge the controller because obviously it's got its own battery as you can see there this truck controller is almost fully charged anyway but we will put it on charge now on the charger as you will see 
there are just normal USB connections. So USB connection into there, like that. And then simply, if you see the USB socket on the bottom there, and that plugs into there. Now, one thing to watch out for is you'll notice, although they look like they're exactly the same all around, you see that wee slot is down at the bottom, down at the bottom there, so don't try and ram it in. Put that on, as you can now see that this is scrolling as well. So we would just leave that there to fully charge, and then we'd come back, and then we're ready for the next stage. Now, as I kind of mentioned earlier, if you have the Spark only combo which means you wouldn't have a controller and you had to have the tray so what i'll do is i'll just move this out of the way and i'm just going to unplug the controller but what i will need actually is i will need to take one of the batteries because we're going to put this into the spark because this is what you would have and then if we stay in focus if you look on the back of the spark you've got the wee boot that lifts up and then simply to charge the spark the same connector that was charged in the controller Again, watch for the polarities, and that will plug into there. And if I hold it right, and you will now see that the spark is now charging here. Now, I will say something though. On here, each battery will take about 50 minutes. Charging via the US cable, USB cable takes a lot longer. I'll be on a lot longer like a couple of hours so ideally if you have the spark on its own bundle it's worth just picking this up and then that way you'll be charging much much quicker okay now that we've got the spark all charged up the next thing we need to do is get connected to our device now you'd obviously have your spark you'll have your controller if you have the fly more package and you will have your smart device what i'm going to do for the uh, clarity of this video i'm actually going to be using my ipad mini just that it's a bit easier to see and it has a matte screen as well so i'm going to take the phone out the way put these up here and then we can put this here and we're going to make it's going to be a lot easier for you to see so the first thing you need to do is for connecting is we need to turn the controller on because this is going to create its own wi-fi network because the connection between the tablet and the handset is wi-fi there are no cables so you have the power button here just move that a bit like that now uh, for safety you don't just push it to switch it on all that will do is check the battery what you have to do is you have to push it once and then within two seconds push hold you hear the beeps you can let go and that is now on and it is now emitting its own wi-fi network so you get your device try and get this so we don't get reflections on it uh, click on settings uh, click on your wi-fi network and then what we're waiting for here is for the spark to appear Right, so once we have the Spark pop up, we just connect to that. Now, if it prompts you for a password, it's default 1234-1234. All DJI devices connect via that. You might want to change your password, because let's face it, somebody in the know sees your Spark flying about, has the DJI Go 4 app on their phone, they could actually connect to your craft. Uh, so once we've done that, we can come out of there if you go to the Apple Store uh, or the uh, Play Store, if you're on Android, and d download the DJI Go 4 app, make sure it's the Go 4 app and not the DJI Go app, as it will require the extra features that that one has. And then we can go into the DJI Go 4 app. Give it a few moments, and then it will pop up like that. And that has us now connected to the craft. Now, as we're indoors, we'll have no GPS. So as you can see there, it says no positioning. So it's in what we call ATI mode. So it has no position hold. The craft will stay level and maintain its height, but it would drift around. Uh, well, obviously we're indoors, so it would drift around. Although the Spark does have the visual positioning on the, the bottom, so it would um, hold itself solid. Okay, so before you fly, you're going to have to actually know what the, th the various features on the controller. So what I'll do is I'm going to cover the um, button switches, etc. on the controller. Now, normally you're going to have a smartphone, but obviously I'm using the tablet just now. You can actually squeeze an iPad mini onto, onto this, but it does feel a little bit uh, unnatural. So something like a big smartphone is ideal. So obviously... To put those in, you just pull the jaws out like that, and the phone simply wedges into the jaws. Just put that like that. 
push that up probably should do this before you have it switched on oh yeah i've still got the cellophane cover on my phone and as you can see it is now clips in like that now i'm just going to remove it just so that it makes it a little bit easier to fold now so first thing you need to do is you need to pop your antennas up they just unclip like that now as far as antenna position goes that is not actually a good way of doing it because the signal that emanates from your antenna comes out like this like my hand like emanating out sideways so here up the way is your dead spot if you can imagine like a big donut around your antenna that is what the signal looks at like so if your uh, craft is out so for example if you're holding the controller here and the craft is there as you can see you want your antennas pointing at the craft so they may actually in fact end up like that because if you think about the way you're going to hold it and the craft is going to be up there in the sky if you were for some reason flying above your head all the time then actually having them like that would be the way to go because the paddles would be facing the craft above your head so that's uh, antenna position but very important otherwise you could run out of signal and the craft would return to home so the main controls pull this in a bit closer the main controllers controls are these ones now if you're used to even ready control cars boats or preferably aircraft these will all make sense but if you've never had a control ready control device before i will go over them now if i move that out of the way i'm going to use the spark itself as a kind of reference to move that in there like that to how it's going to move in reference to the controller so the first control we have well actually i'll cover this one first because this will be the first one you use because that's how you're going to take off now to arm the motors on the craft it's not just like up and away you go because of safety so you do what's called a csc combined stick command so you pull these two sticks in towards now we don't have the props on so it will start up but it won't go anywhere so pull the pull sticks in as you can now see, the motors are now running. Now I'm just, in fact, so to stop them, just this stick all the way back and hold for two seconds and the motors will stop. Okay, so now we're gonna cover, first of all, obviously with the motors we're running to lift the craft up, we simply throttle up, let go, the model will hover, pull back on the stick, it will descend, let go, hover. Now don't worry, if you're flying the craft and you pull the stick all the way back, it knows it's flying it will not shut the motors down so don't worry about that then the next control cover is yaw so they've got yawing left yawing right and what this will do is it rotates the craft so if i put that down so you can see what it would do so that will make the craft yaw to the left or turn to the left and that would make it turn to the right then we have basically our forward and back control so this one if i move the craft to there now so this is like the joystick in an aircraft. So pushing the stick forward will make the craft fly forward. Pull the stick back, the craft would fly back. And then banking right, that way let go. Banking left, that way let go. Now you don't need to worry about learning the controls because it's GPS controlled. It means that when you're not controlling the craft, the craft will stay exactly where it is. So it's important that when you go to fly, the band, the colored band at the top of the screen says is green and says GPS ready to fly. That means you've got location lock. So what would happen is if you let go any of the controls, the craft will stop. Even if the wind's blowing on the side, you'll see it banking over and the wind's trying to blow it off. It will just stay in location. Now, obviously, if you were flying in 30 mile an hour winds, it will do its best, but it's going off downwind. So always be sure about the wind and the wind that you're capable of flying in. Typically a spark about 15 miles an hour. When you get better, okay yes you will be flying in higher winds because there are advanced uh, flights flight settings like sport mode which allow you to be more aggressive and fly in higher winds but until you know about those best either leave it in beginner mode which it was covered when you activate it for the first time which will limit uh, it will lock you in gps mode and it will limit the distance you can fly and the height you can fly so it kind of just ring fences you Okay, now that we've uh, covered the sticks, we can actually go on and cover the buttons. So the first ones we have on the top, we do. there's the gimbal tilt button. So this will tilt the gimbal up and down on the craft itself. So looking up and down. Then we have the shutter. We have the record button. We have a menu button. And then on the front, uh, power button, you obviously know about. 
here we have the home button so pressing this will return the craft to home so if you had say a device failure and you didn't know where the craft was although you should always keep it in line of sight pressing this would return it to home coming along the front you've got your pause button that's if you're doing any automated features like follow me mode uh, active track point of interest which um, i'll cover later uh, this would instantly stop where it is then we have the function button on the front here i did mention about flying in high winds sport button so that will fly in normal gps mode quite sedately put it into sport mode and it will fly like a bat out of hell. Only thing to watch out for is things like your obstacle avoidance will not work. So obviously watch out for that one. Okay, so I'm now going to cover the basic features of the app. So this is gonna be basic. This is for you to get you going because there's a lot of advanced features. If you're not sure, best stick to the basic ones first until you get a hang of it. So the first thing we're gonna cover is the menu bar along the top. This DJI logo will just return you to basically where things like editing functions, etc., are. So you've got equipment, the editor if you want to edit some um, uh, some of your files on the tablet, etc., on the craft, SkyPixel, and that is your DJI account. So we'll go back into the main menu. Okay, so the first bar is, that's your bar. So what's this is indicating? Because we're inside, we don't have GPS. So we can still fly the craft and use the visual positioning sensors on the bottom of the craft, uh, but we won't have access to GPS. So it's basically saying it's no positioning, at a mode, which basically means no GPS. So ideally, you want that green saying GPS, safe to fly. Then moving across, we have the main menu. So here you've got all the different things. Again, if you're not sure, well, watch this video and I will explain um, I will explain how it all works. So, um, so that's that menu. Um, these are just hot, hot links to, in fact, no, they're actually not links. They are on other devices. Um, so you've got how many satellites you've got? Zero, because we're indoors. Is your um, frequency you're on just now? We're on 5.8 gig. That's the battery level. We're down to 30%, so it's kind of warning me that. And then in here, you've got that menu about bringing up the main menu. And then coming down the side, you've got whether you want to go between video and uh, taking pictures. Uh, it's not a nice thing to look at. Oh, look over there. And that's a broken phantom. Uh, and then coming down, that's what will start and stop your video. You can also actually tilt the camera up and down by the tablet, but I don't know why you'd want to do it. Well, I suppose you would want to do it if you don't have a controller and using your smart device. Uh, that takes your pictures or start stops video. In there, you've got all your camera settings for um, video, for camera, and then of course the actual settings themselves. Uh, that you can obviously play back, if I get rid of that, you can play back videos you've shot. Down here, you're gonna have a map. Now, at the moment, because I'm indoors and the tablet is connected to the craft, it has no network, as in 3G or 4G, so there are no maps shown. But if you're using a smart device with maps, they would actually be shown here. I think you can, and you can actually bring that up to full size, swap about if you want, or you can actually minimize it completely. And then down the bottom here, these are just your sort of like flight data. So uh, vertical distance, your distance away, um, and your height there. And then the bottom, that's like your flight radar, tells you what way you're pointing in relation to the controller. Up here, you've got automatic takeoff automatic land and this is where the advanced features are but i'm going to cover that in a different video so these are things like active track and all various things like that tap fly tripod mode gesture control um lots and lots of features because it's that type of craft um now in fact if i start the motors i'm going to just show you one more thing that might not come up because I'm not actually flying. But normally along here, you've got your actual, your sorry, you've got your battery run time here. Now, when you're actually flying, we'll actually tell you in minutes how long you've got left to run. But as the craft isn't actually flying, um, it's not going to be able to kind of calibrate its battery sensing and, and know how to do it. Um, but that's where that would be. So you can see there's a wee dot there. That's when it's going to warn me when there is a low battery and it's time to return to home. If I choose to ignore it, it will actually return to home itself. But what it will do, it will pop a warning up on the screen saying, hey, your battery's low, you should really return to home. And it will kick that in uh, if you don't do anything. So for example, if you lost communication of the craft altogether, it would fly home itself. 
I hope you found that video informative. I am an independent dealer and I do need your support. You can either purchase your products if you're in the UK via the link in the description or you can use my DJI affiliate link if you are not. Uh, I also have a Patreon page so you can donate from as little as a dollar a month, even just join for a few months if you found this video was helpful and you feel like giving me a little reward. Uh, as I'm an independent dealer, I do need your business. Uh, so fly safe and uh, tune back in for the next video.